Hi everyone, in this video, we are going to look at one of the most important things your applications have going for them. And that thing is something known as events. You're going to learn about what they are, why they're important, and also, more importantly, how to actually use them in JavaScript. So let's get started. So I don't know if anyone's ever told you this or whether you figure this out by yourself. Almost all applications that all of us use are boring. Seriously, let's take a look at an example. I'm going to bring up a very common application that you often find in Windows. And that application is WordPad. So I launched the application, it comes up, and they can see a lot of UI, and it seems to be, you know, seems to be pretty cool. Now, once I once the application's launched, it really just sits there. It's not really doing anything. And the reason is WordPad, like so many applications, it really relies on you as the user to interact with it to tell it what to do. So for example, if I start typing by pressing keys on my keyboard, I will see those keys appearing on the screen. I can select the text that was now created for me. I can use the UI to, let's say in this case, change the font to something much larger. I can change the font itself to, let's say, archival narrow. And as I am clicking around and typing on my keyboard, my application really reacts to what I'm doing. And all of the applications that you use are very similar in that they're very boring at first and they come to life only as you are interacting with them. And under the covers, the things that make your application react to what you do, for example, that area is where events really come into play. So here's the thing. There's a very simple model you can use to generalize how all of the functionality in your applications work. It's a simple cause and effect relationship. When something happens, do something. And examples of this include when a page load happens, do play the video of a cat sitting in the cardboard. When I'm clicking, do submit my online purchase order, and, and so on. The open-endedness of this is because depending on your application, different things could be happening on both halves of our model. You know, in the case of WordPad, as I'm typing keys on my keyboard, I want the corresponding letters to show up on the screen. When I'm clicking on the font size dropdown, I want the dropdown to show up. There's a whole host of things that happen even for the most simplest of actions I am performing. And each application you work with will have its own set of you know, dozens or hundreds or even thousands of these little types of models running all at the same time. So, the way I look at it is this. The two halves can be broken up into the left half, which is when blank happens. This is what we would generally call the area where an event will be very active. When something happens, that something is an event, it could be a whole host of things. And the second half is the reaction to the event. I just overheard an event taking place, and after I overheard it, I want to do something. And the reason I broke it up into these two halves is because as someone who will be writing a lot of code, you will need to be very fluent in both dealing with the, the left half, listening for an event, and the right half, reacting to an event once you've overheard it. In JavaScript, the way you listen for an event is by relying on a function called addEventListener. You call addEventListener typically on an element, but it can also be any sort of an object, that is capable of either firing an event or being the target for an event that is going through it. And the add event listener takes three arguments. It, the first argument is the name of the event you care about. It could be a click, it could be a mouse move, a mouse over, or any host of predefined names that you have created, you know, you have specified for you in the JavaScript language. And the second argument is the event handler, the function to call when any event, when the event you specified over here gets overheard. And we're going to look at that one next. And the third argument is a Boolean. It's going to be a true or a false. And it stands for whether you want your event listener code to be active in the event capturing phase or the event bubbling phase. Now, don't worry if that makes no sense to you. We're going to look into more detail into event capturing and event bubbling in a future video. So for now, we're going to specify it as true and just leave it at that. and ignore that it has anything to do with what we're looking into right now. So that's the first half 
listening for events. The second half that we're going to look at is the event handler, the part that has to do with reacting to an event. And the, oftentimes, the reaction to an event is handled by a function. You know, I've mentioned this word a few times already, an event handler, but you might also see it referenced as event listener. So be on the lookout for both of those phrases to make sure you know what's going on. But the thing to know about the event handler is that it's just a function. So what we're going to do next is you've seen the slides. Now let's actually write some code to actually put all of this together into something that's a little bit more, a little more realistic. All right. So I'm going to bring up Visual Studio. And what I have here is a very simple page. I'm going to go ahead and just preview it to show you what's going on. And let's go ahead and let's launch it in Google Chrome. And it's loading. And this page is blank. It's just a light gray background and nothing going on. And given the markup that you see here, that totally makes sense. So what I want to do is this. I have a blank page and I want to specify some code. I want to write some code that specifies when I click anywhere in my page, I want the background color of that page to change. So let's go ahead and take a look at how it's going to go happen. So I want to first add my event listener. So I'm going to specify the document as the element I want to listen for the event on. I'm going to call it add the add event listener function. And the event I want to go with is click. That's the event that specifies the mouse is pressed and the mouse is released on the document element. And when that happens, the click event is fired. And when the click event is fired and overheard, I want to call the change color function, which is going to be the event handler or the event listener for what I'm going to do. And I'm going to say true for the third argument, which we're going to learn more about in a future video. All right, so I have my event listener. This is the first half. Now I want to go ahead and react to it. The function change color, empty function for now. And the body of this function will be the code that I'm going to write to change the background color into something else. So document.body.style.background color, just specifying an inline, inline style in JavaScript. And let's make the color be a, a very princely FFC926. Uh, I did not memorize this. I have it actually in a notepad file on the, on the other screen. All right. So now let's go ahead and just run this app and see what's going on. I have my event listener code, and then I have the event handler right here. So let me launch my app. All right, my page is loaded, and I'm about to click. And once I clicked, notice what happens. The background color of my document changes. Let's see it one more time. Refreshing the page, I click, the page gets, the background color of the page changes. And the reason for it is, it's pretty straightforward. I'm basically listening for a click event on the document element. And when the click event is overheard, which is specified by add event listener and, and the click event being specified as the event to listen for, the change color function gets called. And the change color function basically just sets the background color of my document into the yellow color that you ended up seeing. Pretty straightforward, right? All right, let's, we have one more thing to look into before we wrap this up. The event handler is a little bit different than your typical function, only a little bit. The reason is that your event handler carries with it an important argument known as the event argument, and that argument contains a whole lot of useful information about the event that you're dealing with. In this case, I clicked, so the click event contains information about which mouse buttons and things like that that I dealt with. If I had a keyboard event that I was listening for, the event argument would contain some properties about the keyboard. It contains some data about what element that actually was involved in firing the event and so on. These are very important details that we're not going to look into too much right here, but just know that all you really have to do is just specify some argument that you need to carry the argument through your function. E is what all the cool kids use. It's what's commonly used in most applications you see, but you can basically call it anything you want. Like you can use the letter N if you want, for example. Just make sure that as you're writing your code that you basically are consistent in whatever argument you specified. All right, so that is really the, the gist of how to deal with, deal with events. The thing to remember is that so much of your applications deal with having to react to things that either you're doing to it or that other parts of the application are doing to it. 
as well. And all of that is handled and mediated by the event handling logic that you end up creating, which is made up of both the event listener, which is the part that listens for an event and determines what to actually watch out for, and the reaction to the event that often gets called when what you're looking for is found, what you're listening for is over, overheard. So if you want to learn more about events, just go to croup.com and search for events. You'll probably find this in the first one, two, or three results that you find. And if you need any help, post in the comments of the tutorial itself, or you can go to the forums and post your question there. You can also find me on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube. You have many ways of getting in touch with me. And if you found this video useful, you'll find a whole lot more content, probably even more entertaining than we saw here in JS 101, JavaScript for Beginners, where I cover a whole host of things related to getting familiar with JavaScript, events being one big part of them. And you can buy this book on either Amazon in paperback or Kindle editions. And I think it's a hoot, so feel free to give it a shot. And with that, I will let you to it and I will see you, see you around.